That's okay. I'll still do it. All right. Shh, 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 shh. Uh. So, Jermaine, I'm going on my axis. So, oh, that's terrible. And it goes on forever. So, it starts at this negative four, right? It goes to negative two, and there's a hole there, right? So, I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to do a back-to-back -back parentheses because the back-to-back -back parentheses will leave out just that number. Then I pick up at negative two, and I go to positive two. Again, because there's a hole. That's what's causing me to do these back-to-back -back parentheses as I move left to right. And then two to infinity. Yep. And then range, so I'm going from the bottom up. So what's the lowest the graph ever goes? Negative infinity. As I make my way up, I need to start looking for things that might be blocking, that might be blocking. So I, I'm looking here, right? Actually, no, I lied. Where's the... I'm looking here at it going down forever. That's my negative infinity. As I make my way up, is that a roadblock? Yeah. On range up. No, because as I move over, there's still a Y. There's still a piece of graph that goes with that Y. So I don't need to leave it out of my range. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see why it's not? Uh-huh. Yes. So if this was an open dot right here, then yes, I'd need to leave that out. Okay. But like somebody said yesterday, oh, the closed dot always trumps the open dot. Yes, that's right. And every point on a line can be considered a closed dot. Okay. But as I move up, so now here's my next roadblock, right? And I stop there, and that's at what? One. Is that a bracket or a parenthesis? A bracket. And it is a bracket because there's actually a line here. Well, again, so I've got these open circles on the end, right? I've got an open circle, I've got an open circle, but all these points in between are closed, so the Y is there. What? Okay. That's a watermelon. Four? Yeah. Oh, is it a function? Yes. It passes the vertical line test, so that was yes. What? All right, number four. That's correct. Yes, you could do it two ways. You could say the range is y equals three, or you could say just the number three. Any one of those would work. Is it a function? Yes. It, vertical line test. If you ever encounter one that you can't do the vertical line test on, like if it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so look at number seven. Right. If I drop a vertical line, it would cross the graph in two places, so it's not a function. Domain on this one? All right, so left to right. As I move left to right, hmm, let's be purple. The furthest left and the furthest right. Negative two to two. Do I need brackets or parentheses? Brackets, why? It, why do I need brackets and not parentheses? It's included. It includes those points. Those points are on that circle, so it includes it. How about the range? Oh, there you go. Wait, ah. <laughs> Five. So, yeah, you could, again, you could do this two different ways. So, 
this is what we call a discrete graph. Discrete means there are just points on there. It's not a smooth, connected graph. So for the domain, I am just going to list out the individual x points. So negative 3, negative 2, 1, 2, and 5. You could also do this in um, interval notation if you wanted, and that would look this way. Well, because it doesn't include everything between those two values. You see what I'm saying? When you do that, when you say, and hold on, I'll show you. If I were to say negative 3 to 5, that would mean that x could be negative 3, it could be 5, and it could be every single thing in between. But if you get to negative 1, look, there's nothing that goes with it. Or even negative 2.5, there's nothing that goes with it. So that's why you can't do that. And then bless you, the same with the range. I'm just going to list out the y's here. Um, 0, let's see, bottoms up, negative 5. Did I leave that? Oh, I got it. Negative 5, 0, 1, and 4. Okay, at this time, can we have juniors with the last names that begin with P through Y? P through Y. Thank you. Yes, either one's fine. Yes, if you would like to. Number nine. All right, domain left to right on this one. That's right, I was going to say that one, but that's not. All right, so I'm going, it's smooth and continuous all the way um, across. So negative four until I hit what? Three. Why is it a parenthesis? It's an open dot. There is, but there's also a closed dot at two here. How about range? That is correct. Now this one is not. Why, Tyler? If I drop a vertical line, look, I could drop a vertical line here and intersect one, two, three, four. That one x value there has four different y values that go with it. Not that, no bueno. What else? Yeah? Be happy to. I'm sorry about that video link, too. I, I didn't get the second message until this morning. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't play. Twelve. Do mean left to right bracket negative three positive three. How about the range? All brackets, that's exactly. Bruh. Any junior who has not taken their picture yet should report to the auditorium at this time. This is the last call for juniors. Thank you. No, I have classes. And then they fuss at us if we don't. But literally, I have fourth block planning, so I don't get a break until fourth block. They pack up and leave by then. All right, what's the domain on number six? Left as far as you can go, so negative infinity, four, bracket. There you go. How about the range? Bottom, x value is zero to infinity. Is that a function? Yes, it is. 
Say that again. Yep, just going up. The lowest it goes is zero, and then it goes up forever. You're thinking, you're thinking the domain. So that describes axis. So it's going left and it's going up. So this, this left and right is domain, up and down is right. So that's why, since it's left, that's why my domain has a negative infinity number. Anything else? All right, here comes the good stuff. How many of you have heard of greatest integer before? Anybody have you? A little bit? It's actually the opposite of what its, its name implies. But... Here's what it does. So the greatest integer takes any value that you give it and it rounds it down to the nearest integer instead of even though it says greatest integer, right? So it rounds down to the nearest integer. Let me show you what it looks like and then I'll explain a little more how it, it happens. All right, so I have these funny little symbols that look like this, kind of a double bracket here. Yeah. It should be, yeah. You don't see it? Tell me if you don't see it. I posted it earlier. To the nearest energy. Yeah, the nearest energy. So what does this mean? Well, this means if I have, let's say, I ask you, and this is just what the notation looks like. What is the greatest integer of 2.3? 2. What is the greatest integer of 1 half? Be careful before you answer this one. 0. Because it rounds down, right? You following me? I tricked you. Oh, because I thought everybody was going to say one. You had it? Um, well, they're not parentheses. They're like these funny little, bless you. Negative two because I'm going down, right? So what's smaller than negative one? So negative two. Do you see the pattern here? Do you see what we're doing? What if I changed my function then? Let's say I asked you, let's say I told you that, have y'all got that? Okay. Do a little evaluating before we do graphing. Y'all are just going to love the graph. That was sarcasm. Planes ready. Let's say I told you that f of x was the greatest integer of x minus 5. So there's my function. What would happen if I asked you to find f of Three point eight. You do the inside pressure. I, I do three point eight minus five. Well, what is three point eight minus five? Right? And now what does that equal? Negative two. Good job. All right, so it's a really easy concept, right? The concept algebraically is easy. The graph is what gets a little bit, yeah. What? It's just, this just equals, you move it to negative two, yeah. Okay. Where are we confused? What happened? You don't know what? 
I just said this is an example. If f of x is this, so let's do another one. What is f of negative 8.1? Please support the auditorium for pictures of sophomores with last names that begin with K through O. Thank you. Students, guys. So that means take 8.1, negative 8.1, plug it in. So negative 8.1 minus 5, which is what? Y'all can do this. That's negative 4. That's exactly right. We're okay so far. All right. Let's talk about the graph because that to me is the hardest part. Ready? Tell me when you're good. Your calculator also has this button on it, and I'll show you. It rounds down to the nearest whole number. That's what those little double bracket symbols mean. Round down to the nearest whole number. Um, if you take out your calculator and you hit the button that says math, scroll over one to num, N-U-M, and then option number five, where it says I-N-T, that's the greatest integer, and that will do this operation for you. So if you did I-N-T of negative 13.1, what does it give you? Negative 14. So should you get confused? Yes. Math, and then you click to the right one for number at the top, and then down to option number five. Math num five, or math right five. Everybody find it? You don't need me to project it up here so you can see? No, oh, okay, all right. Um, so now let's talk about graphing because this is the hard part. I got it. I don't want to move. Oh, let's see. Yeah, you got to do the minus five. All right, let's graph. Okay. Eek. All right. This is where we're going to start. Y'all don't have to put that in your notes. I was just being silly. All right. Um, this is where things are going to get dicey. So we're going to walk through it, and hopefully you'll pick up on the pattern and see what's happening. Now, normally we graph with a table of values, right? So let's think about it that way. If I'm just graphing the greatest integer of x. I know what happens when I plug in whole numbers, right? It spits that same whole number back out. Zero would give me zero. One would give me one. Negative one would give me negative one, right? And so, in fact, all of these are points on my graph, but this is not connecting in a straight line. Do you agree? Okay, if I plug an integer into the greatest integer function, it just is that integer, right? This is still just 1. So for every whole number I have, the x and y are the same value. Would you agree? So negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, all these. But this does not graph a straight line. Let's, let's plug in a couple more points and see if we can figure out what's happening. What if I plugged in, let's say, a half? What's the y value then? Zero, right? Because it rounds down to the nearest. Okay, so zero. So here's a half. 
and there's zero. Do we all agree? I mean, that's kind of like not not as accurate. Let's stick here. Let's stick close by right now, and let's think. What if I did three fourths? It's still zero. Do you agree? And in fact, all the way up, what if it was 0.9? It's still zero, right? As I move over, all of these points are still zero. But then it jumps, right? It goes, oh, all of a sudden, I'm not zero anymore. Now I'm one. Where does that happen? At one, right? So I can get as close to this one as I want to, but I can never actually be one. But everything in between is going to give me a zero value. So there's an open dot there because I can't be one because once I hit one, I, oop, I jump up here. Right? That's exactly right. So then what happens if I plug in 1.1? 1, .1? 1, right? So 1.1 gives me one. And in fact, as I go across here, all these are still going to give me one until I actually hit two. And that's the point that it goes, whoop, jumping again. Yes. Oh, I'm glad. Who said that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at Harris. I thought, it does look like stairs. And some people call this a staircase function because it does look like stairs. Good job, Miles. I'm impressed. So if I follow this pattern through, this is what it looks like. And it would continue off in both directions. Sorry. Yeah, you will. It's not bad. It's really not. All right, so... As I look at this, and I know that it continues off in both directions, tell me what you think the domain of this function is. Why? Why? It keeps jumping, but every x is there, right? Even though I've got these breaks in the graph, like right here and right here and right here, there's still a point above it. Remember that closed dot chumps that open dot every time. It's still there. There's still a piece of graph there. So it's negative infinity to infinity. What about the range, though? Oh. It doesn't write. So my y's are integers. That's exactly right. So the range... I'm going to show you a cool little way to write this. To say this mathematically, I could do a Y. This little symbol means is a member of. Okay. So Y is a member of. And then this big fancy Z that you have probably seen before, maybe not, means you have yes. There's your range. Y is any integer. If you wrote Y is all integers, I would give you credit. It's kind of hard to do it in. Well, integers. Yeah. So greatest integer just means whatever the value is, I ran round down to the nearest integer. So I can put a decimal in, but I'll never get a decimal back out. Instead, I'll get the integer right below it. Yeah. Whole number. At this time, Saul Flores with the last name P2, P2 through T. Please report to the auditorium. That's P through T. Thank you. That's how we say the greatest integer. It's a function just like absolute value or an exponent of two or a square root. It's an operation on the number. So it just looks like a bracket with an extra little bar. Down to two. It always rounds down. No matter what's in there, it rounds down. 
So negative 1.7 rounds down to the closest one, negative two. So it always, it's always open on the points where they're the same. It's like if I plug in an integer, I get an integer back out, right? So if I plug in one, I get one. So the point one, one is closed in. Does that make sense? So then if I plug in two, I get two. So the point two, two is closed. So at, at zero, zero, okay, so let's see, one, one. So at one, zero is open because if you put one in the equation, you get one back out, right? So that means there's an actual point at one, one. So the one, zero would be open. So we can't actually, now up to point nine, 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 whatever, it's going to spit back out zero. It's going to get a zero. But the minute I change to one, it jumps up to one. Let me go there, Hope. I mean, Leah. Yeah. Sorry. That's already down, so go below. Think about the number line, so that it's always going to be back. Because you what? You were laughing? Oh, you didn't miss a whole lesson. Just one little thing. It's never going to change the sign unless you're going from, yeah. It's okay, so that's what I have. So every... When I plug in an actual integer value, it gives me an act, the actual integer back out, right? Those are all closed dots. In anything, remember, that's a part, all of these are always closed dots, okay? So as I look at this graph, right, at 0, 0, it's a closed dot. If I, you need me to go back over. Okay. All of these are actual points, right? Okay, those are the first ones I graph. 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, so on and so forth. Then I started playing around with some fractions. Well, what happens if? What happens if I plug in a half? Well, down to the closest integer from a half is 0. So the point 1 half 0 happens about right here. And in fact, any number less than one that I plug in is going to give me a value back out of zero, right? Point nine 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 forever till zero, right? The point that I plug in one though is when my function jumps up and it becomes one. Does that make sense? And the same thing here. So maybe this is one point one. Still giving me a function value of 1. Maybe it's 1.9. Still, I'm up here at 1. And in fact, I don't make that jump until I actually hit 2, and then I become 2. Okay, and that's, like the open dot. that's correct. Because if x is ever 2, y cannot be 2. y is going to be 2. That is how I explain it first. What line? Okay, because what's happening if I have the greatest integer just of x and I just plug in some random whole numbers, right? Um, um, for thing, like, so it's just like, it's a little bit of a thing. 
from the bottom up, the smallest to bigger. That's the way I feel like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I said that. Oh, we got it. All right, so let's plug in some random integer values, right? And in fact, if, let's just start at what you normally start with. If you were graphing back in 8th grade algebra and they were asking you to graph this equation, you'll start there, right? Integers, yeah. You didn't get what? Are you talking about here? What are you talking about? Oh, you need to copy it? That's how you do it on your calculator. Yeah, you do. Hit the button that says math. Scroll over. What's smaller, negative infinity or negative 12? Correct. Five, for option five is in. What's the smallest whole number below 13.1? Oh my gosh. Here's what the heck! <laughs> what? what? Do your quiz. What are you talking about? We won't do a lot with the graph, but yeah. Yeah, give me just a second. Let me finish this now. All right. If we plug in whole numbers here, right? If you plug in a whole number, you get a whole number back out. Okay? So all of these are just going to give me just the whole number itself. So plot those points. Um, is it like an embroidered or just not? So, say this is open and this one is closed. Wait. I'm not telling you how to do it. Well, no, I'm not asking how you do it. I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this. You're floundering a bit, Harris. I'm confused. I know. Anything else you can find? I don't know. I haven't worked it out yet. So say I get so I get the domain wrong. Are you gonna mark my whole right. question wrong? No. So I get my range right. I get these points right. Say I draft one of these wrong. Say I get one of these right. Again. Oh my. How many times did you sign your name on your paper? <laughs> okay. Let's plot. Did y'all get it these plotted? That's where I would start if I was graphing. Now, we're going to do some stuff that are other than just greatest integer. Right now, I'm just dabbling your toes in here. So just, y'all just stay with me. One. What? 27 what? I gave you a 27 one time? Oh my god. Okay. Back here. Um, 
So now what's happening in between these points? That's the question that you're asking yourself, right? So I'm going to plug in some points to try to figure out what's going on. So maybe I start, let's just start in this little area right here. To graph it. We're trying to graph it. Kind of like you graph y equals x squared. You graph y equals absolute value of x. Now we're graphing y equals the greatest integer of x. All right. Math over to num and then five. Dim six. Now Y'all haven't done it yet. What are you talking about? All right, now my calculator is connecting my jumps and it shouldn't, yeah. Yes, we haven't got, we're still where we were when you left, don't worry. All right, I'm going to just change this. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see a little better. Oh, you will before you leave here. All right, now, my stairs are connecting, yours should not. If you have a newer calculator, if it does, then it's okay. These jumps that are happening on mine, see your calculator, this is why you really have to know what's going on with the function. Because if you look, it's connecting these parts that I know it doesn't connect. Real quick. Um, all right, so you got a homework sheet coming around, you're just doing one through 11 on it. It's going to be some piecewise practice. We're going to save the greatest integer part of it until tomorrow. And that's the very last one. If you're feeling froggy, go ahead and try it. If not, we'll, we will talk about it tomorrow. We'll go over that. But for the rest of this one, if I start thinking about what's happening in between here, right? Let's think about what I'm plugging in and what it's spitting out. So if I plug in, let's just say a half because that's in between these two, right? If I plug in a half, what do I get back out? Oh, I didn't mean to. Thank you. Zero, right? Because zero is the smallest thing under a half. So that point is one half zero. Okay? If I plug in, let's say I plug in 0.9, what does it give me back out? Zero. And in fact, all the way over, until I actually hit one and it jumps one, it always gives me zero, right? For that reason, there's an open dot at one, and at one, it whoop, it jumps up to the Y being one, okay? But everything in between here would give me a zero value. Do the same thing at one. When I go past one, it's still giving me one until I actually become two, and that's the point that it jumps. So that's what your staircase or step function for just with nothing done to it, just this, yes. 